Hey guys, this is Dr. Sandy with another exciting video for you and your family and friends. Today we're going to be talking about the top three stretches that help with sciatica. If you're watching for the first time, welcome. My name is Dr. Sandy. I've been in practice now as a chiropractor for over 20 years. I've personally done over 300,000 chiropractic adjustments, uh, just serving people and still looking to get better, still help them at the highest level. But I wanted to make a video because sciatica can be very scary it can be obviously very painful and i really hope this video at least gives you some um, techniques certain things you can do at least to take the pressure off until you get professional help um, but i wanted to go over that so what is sciatica first of all so you have something called the sciatic nerve which runs through the leg it starts at the base of the spine if there's any pressure on it it can cause like a stabbing electrical pain usually going past the knee going into the foot um, it can be very scary. Again, a very sh like intense pain, sharp shooting pain, electrical pain. Uh, it can be very intense. Um, now, what are some of the causes of this? I think, in my opinion, just by looking at people, if you sit a lot, uh, maybe you lifted something incorrectly, too much pressure in that area can be some triggers. But let's jump into some things we can do about it. So number one, we want to try to take some pressure off it. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to pretend that I have sciatica on the right leg. So what I could do is if I'm able to, I'm able to stand and if I can reach forward, if I'm in too much pain, I just may want to be seated and then reach forward to take some pressure off that area, almost open up that area so there's less pressure um, and that should take some pressure off. Also, again, as I make this video, you know, do the stretches. Obviously, if something bothers you and it doesn't feel right, you want to stop. All these stretches should help you see what's good for you and you want to custom uh, customize and modify. So if I show you this and you feel like, well, I can only do five or 10%, that's awesome. If that gave you relief, if you're going in that position that irritates you, obviously you want to stop. So you always listen to the body. It'll give you feedback. So again, we're just going to go forward, taking some pressure off and that should open up that area and take some pressure off that sciatic nerve uh, to help the situation. And we can do this standing, uh, or if that's too much, we can do it seated. The next stretch, number two, uh, what you're going to do is obviously with a wall, you're standing there and what you want to be able to do is you put your hands up like this and then what you're going to do is you're going to get that leg, in this case, again, my right leg, and I'm going to have it go all the way back and I'm just holding and really stretching out that leg. That's going to take pressure off that area. Um, you can do both sides, but if obviously my right leg's the major issue, this is probably one of my favorite ones I would recommend for sciatic issues. So right leg going all the way back, uh, taking pressure off that nerve. Also, by the way, if you have a history of sciatica or any type of back issues, honestly, you should be just doing these stretches uh, preventatively. So we had the one where we're going forward, we're using the wall. And then finally, the other stretch you wanna do is lying on your back on the ground, or you might be in bed again if you can't move is really simple is just bringing the knee to chest. So as much as you can, again, if I have issues with the right leg, we're gonna bring that knee to chest, I'm gonna hold. And all of these stretches again, you know, see what you can tolerate, maybe five seconds, 10 seconds at the beginning. I would like you at a certain point, if you can, get up to 30 seconds. And then if you're at a point where you actually are fine and you're just more preventative, you may want to go to 30 seconds up to a minute and now you're like strengthening you really have no symptoms you're just trying to get things better and then you also have to look at the frequency so in the beginning if the pain is strong i mean you may want to try hourly if it's giving you some relief um, and then as you get better and better and the symptoms are kind of going away you may want to do this two or three times a day um, i'll be honest with a lot of my patients we used to say twice i'm telling some of my patients man you got that time why not do three times it just takes a few minutes it really helps the body so again we can go forward, we can use the wall, have it going back, and then finally the knee to chest, which is probably the easiest one. This should give you some relief if you really can't move and you're in bed, and then you're just bringing that knee to the chest, holding for what you feel comfortable with. The other tip I would give you as well, um, if you are suffering, I would probably avoid sitting because that could aggravate that area. So you mean, may need to take a break from work, take a few days off work, uh, but sitting can actually aggravate the situation. And if, of course, listen to your body, if it's more the walking or standing, you want to avoid those activities. Ice or heat, I would usually say in this situation ice, but I got to tell you, after all these years in practice, it depends on the person. So ice is usually good when the pain is really intense and sharp and shooting. Get an ice pack. Uh, wrap it in the towel. You want to put it um, on the area that's obviously bothering you. 
Uh, never put ice directly on the skin. Obviously, that's not a good thing. So we're going to get that ice pack, wrap it up in a towel. Five to ten minutes should take some pressure off. But let's say you do put the cold pack and you're like, wow, it actually causes more irritation. <coughs> Excuse me, your body type actually might be doing better with heat. So in that case, we're going to get a heat pack, a gel pack, maybe a bean bag or whatever it is. We're going to put it again, wrapped in the towel, never directly on the skin and do the heat. I usually find cold is better in this situation, but if heat works better for you, fantastic. So um, if it's still obviously troubling you, troubling you, you should see a professional and obviously get it assessed. Uh, it can be scary, but there are options out there. I really hope this video uh, did help you, give you some good tips for you. Um, and as always, if you could like, share, subscribe, God bless you, Dr. Sandy. I'll be here again with another video. Just wishing you all the best. God bless you.